Hello, this is Dave at Megapoints Controllers. If you're connecting to your System 2 board using its IP address, you're probably doing it wrong. Let me explain what I mean. It's important during the initial connection to get the board on your network. And the only way you can confirm that is by going through the uh, connection on your smartphone or tablet or PC or whatever, and getting that first board connected to your network. Once you've got it connected, uh, the IP address will probably change over time. Uh, this can be both annoying, but it's actually quite normal. You see, the IP addresses are allocated by your network's router. So when a board connects to your network and boots up, uh, one of the first things it does is ask the router, can you assign me an IP address? It uses a protocol called DHCP. So it sends out a probe to the router and the router says, hi, yes, sure. And it will either say, uh, sure, have this one. It's the one you used last time. Or sure, have this one, whether you've used it or not. And we can configure how that works within the router, but it would be beyond the scope of this. So let's assume it's going to give us an IP address that changes every single time you turn on. And I'm going to show you on this video why that's not a problem, because we're not interested. So I have a panel controller on my network, and you can see it on the screen here. Uh, this is its assigned IP address, 192.168.060. On my network, uh, 60 is, is the device on the network, and the network itself is 192.168.0. And we can see in the browser bar, in the address bar, I've typed in that, that IP address. So what address would I type in if it was on a different IP address? Because it would be impractical to jump through all the hoops again of connecting via a cell, note, a cell phone on a local network and so on. And you don't need to. Each device has a unique name. In this case, it's in blue here and it's panel A1 FFAC. So if I'm connected to a modern network, I can just copy and paste this in or, or type it. So I'll type panel a1 ffac dot local the dot local is important for the first connection because it tells the browser i don't have a dns configuration i'm using a local dns configuration and if i type that in now i'm connected to the same device but instead of the ip address here i've got the panel name so if you look at a board here's a solenoid driver we write the serial number on it so if it's connected to your network, you should be able to go sold-64F21C and I can connect to it and I really don't care what that IP address is. Let's see what else I have connected on my uh, Megapoints uh, network. So I'm gonna click the locate board and you can see here in the status log, I've three boards attached, two servo drivers and a solenoid driver and they are not connected to the network because they have an IP address of zero. They could be brand new, I could have just connected them, or I could have disabled it. So let's get them an IP address. All I have to do is click the button, share Wi-Fi credentials. See what happens. At the status box, it's saying Wi-Fi credentials shared with all nodes. And then these are the boards restarting and they now have IP addresses. Now, if you're just connecting on an ad hoc basis, then it's fine to go solenoid driver, click the IP address, and it will connect you to it straight away. But there's a more intelligent way of doing this. Let me show you how. Let me close this window and let me delete this. Delete. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save all these names in a series of bookmarks. So I'm going to go to the top of my browser and I'm using Chrome here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to bookmark manager. And I'm going to add a folder just above it. So I'll create one called system two and what i'll do now this panel because it's it's in by name i'm going to drag that over to the system two folder and now if i look at the system two folder it's got a panel controller now if i connect to the solenoid driver i'll click the button and it'll open a new window and you can see here the name and serial number, which is sold-64EA40. So what I want to do is make sure I connect using its name. So I will copy and paste that into the address bar. 
If it doesn't resolve, you've probably forgot to type dot local. And now I'm connected using the name. And now I can drag this name into the System2 folder. Now when I connect, I've got two, I've got the solenoid driver and I've got the uh, panel controller. Let me close this window. Let's repeat that for the servo drivers. So I'll take this servo driver first. Serve8A1CC84. So I'll copy that into the address bar. Dot local. So I've added A1CC84. Let's bring the other one on. This is the IP address 61, so I want the IP address 79. Connect via its name. C, control V, dot local. Let me try it without, see if it resolves. And it brings up a search query because it doesn't know it's local. So I'll re-enter that. Dot, if you see similar, you forgot to type dot local. So I have the name here and now I can drag this over and place it in this folder. So if I close everything down and I want to reconnect now, I've got a folder here, System2, and I can go to any device. Now I've got two servo drivers here. They've got the same name, which one's which? Well, if you mouse over, it will give me the device name A1CC84, A1C604. However, if I right click, I can rename as well. There should be a rename option in here, edit. So in type of, instead of typing servo8, they're all mega points, so I can get rid of that. I'll just do servo8 tunnel entrance. So now, when I look at my system two, I've got the servo8 for the tunnel entrance. Let me right click on the next one down, edit, and I will do this, I'll delete that, and I'll make it servo8 station approach down. How's that? Now I have station approach down tunnel entrance. And every time I restart my boards, I don't care anymore what the IP address is because I bookmark the name. So tunnel entrance, servo eight, and we're there. This one actually has a name of Dave's chair. Let's make that match. Tunnel entrance, save. And the other one, station approach down. Down, save. So now I have the ability to connect to any of my system two boards, irrespective of their IP address, solenoid driver. And there it is. So if I go to my panel controller, what I tend to do, and what we do on Pete Waterman's layouts is, we turn the Wi-Fi off when we're doing an exhibition because we don't need it on. So I'll just do revoke Wi-Fi credentials. And what that will do, that will instruct all the other boards on the network to forget the network address, except the one I'm currently connected to. So if I uh, go to uh, tunnel entrance servo eight, that's not going to work because it no longer has an IP address. I always keep one device connected because it, it provides a convenient jump off point to restart all the others as and when I need them. You can leave them all up if you wish. But if you go to one that isn't up, then you'll see this, the site can't be reached and that's normal. So I'll go to my panel controller because I've left that one up, connect to that. So anytime I want to bring my boards back online, I'll do a share Wi-Fi credentials and then all the boards that were turned off will now reboot and you'll see in the status log, there they all are. And I can go to my bookmarks. Let's do the station approach down and connect to that servo controller. I don't care what the IP address is anymore. You can leave the net, leave it. You can leave them all attached to your network indefinitely. You can turn them off. It's entirely up to you. But if you're using an IP address to connect, once you're configured, you're doing it wrong and there's a much easier way. Hope that helps and thanks for watching.